Buongiorno ragazzi! So today we are going to talk about Apollo, uh, the complex nature of this god and uh, the contradiction of human nature. So first of all in this uh, piece of the class we will talk about uh, Apollo's birth and the main sides of his cult, uh, they are Delos and Delphi. Let's go on. So Apollo, as you remember, is a twin brother of Artemis. Last time we were in class, we analyzed um, her sister, his sister. And uh, so here is Apollo. Apollo is really one of the most important complex of all Olympian deities uh, in both Roman and Greek uh, religion and mythologies. So the, um, Apollo is the national or should divinity of the Greeks uh, because uh, of the many attributes of this god, because he is an oracular god and uh, he is uh, considered the ideal uh, of um, the youth, the ephib, uh, the chorus. So the ideal of ma uh, male beauty, uh, beauty. So and for this is the most Greek of all gods. Then so he is uh, known as Apollo in Rome too, and as Apollo in the Etruscan mythology. We will see that as um, his sister, he's considered god of archery, but then together with this music and dance connected with the dances um, attributed and uh, consecrated to his sister Artemis. And then he is a um, god of light, so of truth and prophecy and together with this of healing in contradiction with diseases. So let's see about his birth. Very connected with his birth is one of the main two cult sites uh, of Apollo, so Delos and Delphi. This is very unusual for an, an Olympic deity to have two major cult sites. But because Apollo became extremely important uh, in the Greek world as um, uh, the word of the supreme god, so an oracular deity. And this is meant through his name uh, that was given to cities uh, and to um, personal names, Apollodorus, Apollonius, Apollonia as a city. This testifies very well his popularity around Greece. So, first sight, Delos. So, as you remember, for Artemis, Zeus is the father of the twins and Leto the mother. Leto was a titaness and uh, caught the eyes of Zeus for her beautiful uh, eyes and uh, mm, she is little, in, little known in uh, mythology but only for her pregnancy and because she wandered around to find a place where giving birth to Apollo and Artemis since Hera was very jealous and caused all lands to shun her. So these details of the wanderings of Leto are described in the Homeric hymn to Apollo. Apollo is frequently called Phoebus. So especially in the Homeric hymn to Apollo, he's mentioned as Phoebus and not as Apollo. So because his grandparents were the Titans, Chaos and Phoebe. So Phoebe is remembered as the goddess of prophetic radiance, so the shining one. 
and both Artemis and Apollo have been tiled after her. Phoebe um, had with his concert two daughters, Leto and Asteria. Asteria so was a titaness too, uh, and goddess of oracles and prophecies. So you see that all these gods, this lineage of gods, is connected with oracles. She was very beautiful and so Zeus um, fall in love with her and pursued her. So to escape, she transformed herself into an island called Asteria that later will be known as Delos. So according to, again, the Homeric hymn to Apollo, Delos or Asteria is the only island and land accepting Leto for giving birth to her children. Delos, remember, is credited to be Asteria, a sister of Leto. The island of Delos became sacred to Apollo, and there is another version of the story uh, in which Zeus asked Poseidon, his brother, to find a very secret but safe place for Leto to give birth to the children. So at the end she arrived in the island of Delos um, and uh, since the island was not connected to the land, could not be considered land and so uh, was not um, forbidden uh, by Hera and her jealousy. So she was able there to give birth safely to Artemis and Apollo. So it's because of this uh, or for the other story that from that moment on, Dallas, that was a very small and rocky and unfertile island, was declared the most sacred of all islands, according to Callimachus. And became, uh, through all Greek culture, devoted to Apollo. In fact, uh, it was said to be bath in unique light of Zeus' son. In the picture you can see the island today and how it is rocky eh, and uh, unfertile. Established as a cult center, the island of Delos uh, for sure um, received an importance that um, the natural resources couldn't, couldn't have an offer to the land. Uh, and uh, this is said by Leto in the Homeric hymn to Apollo um, that was searching for the birding place for the twins. And in the hymn, she addressed the island saying these words, Delos, if you would be willing to be the abode of my son Phoebus Apollo, and make him a rich temple, for no other will touch you as you will find, and I think you will never be rich in oxen and sheep, nor bear uh, vintage, nor yet produce plants abundantly. But if you have the temple of fire-shooting Apollo, all men will bring you hecatombs and gather there, an incessant savor of rich sacrifice will always arise, and you will feed those who dwell in you from the hand of strangers, for truly your own soil is not rich. The soil is not rich, was not rich, and only having Apollo uh, and his uh, huge sanctuary there would have bring to the land uh, the strangers and uh, all the riches uh, and uh, a fertile soil, uh, otherwise uh, um, the island would never reach um, the, um, the value 
uh, and the consideration um, ha having after that. Let's consider now the story of Anius. Anius in Greek mythology was uh, the son of Apollo and of Roeo, who was a descendant of Dionysus. When Roeo was pregnant, she had been placed in a chest and cast into the sea by her father, so she was floating and arrived the islands of Delos, where uh, everybody know that was the birthplace of Apollo, and gave birth to Anius. So Anius then became king of Delos, a seer and a priest of Apollo. Anius had three daughters, the mother is unknown, Eno, Spermo and Elais. We can translate them with wine, so they are representing wine, grain, seed and oil, granted by Dionysus with the gift of bringing these three crops to lands. So um, we find in Ovid and uh, in um, Virgil uh, this uh, three entities represented. So of it's in the Metamorphosis uh, um, reports in one of the Metamorphoses that Agamemnon, the leader of the Greek army, tried to force Anius' daughters to come to Troy with the Greek army. But Dionysus turns them into doves. Doves are the sacred birds of Delos. But then, according to legend, they supplied the Greek expedition when going to Troy. And then Virgil in the Hanade mentioned them as supplying Aeneas in his flight from Troy to Italy. And in the picture below, you can see the meeting in between Aeneas and Anius. Anius' three daughters represent, as we said many times, that um, Greek mythology is transferring in stories uh, what is important for civilization. So having these three important products, wine, grain, seed and oil, for um, uh, the self-subsistence of each land, but then important very much too for the Greeks uh, as um, exports, mm, products to export. So um, on this was made uh, the um, richness of uh, the Greek trade mm, and of Greek life. These three elements are essential in Greek life. As the patron deity of uh, Delphi, Apollo is an oracular god, the prophetic deity. So Apollo is the god who usually affords help and he has various names calling him the averter of evil. So Apollo from Delphi is a patron of all weak figures, seafarers, foreigners, and fugitives and refugees. Apollo is considered the god of medicine with healing properties. Uh, we don't know exactly if through himself or through his son Asclepius. Asclepius then become, will become the major god of medicine and healing. So Apollo delivered people from epidemics, but as uh, his sister Artemis, uh, he was a contradictory god because he is also a god who could bring uh, deadly plagues uh, 
uh, and ill health conditions, especially with his arrows. And arrows and the invention of archery is credited to Apollo himself and to his sister too, Artemis. So Apollo is usually described for this as carrying a golden bow and a quiver of silver arrows. Another of the multiple Apollo's capacities is to make youths grow. So, and for this he was uh, Greek, Greek wide considered as a Panhellenic cult. So he's seen as a protector of a young in Greek Kurotrophos. And so for this he is concerned with the health first and education of, of children. And he presided over their passage into adulthood because long hair, which were prerogative of boys, um, had to be cut when boys become an adult. So long hair was cut at the coming of age, that was called Ephebeia. And then, so the long hair were dedicated to which God, for sure, Apollo. Apollo was then in his uh, duality of his, uh, his deity, was the two deity of countryside and a deity of cities. So it was an important deity for herdsmen and shepherds. He was really the patron of them. And so he protected herds, flocks and crops, especially from diseases and predators. Then, on the other hand, Apollo also encouraged very much finding new towns. This was a prerogative of Greeks that were spreading all over the Mediterranean new colonies. And so Apollo was the patron of establishment of civil constitution over there. So because he was the giver of laws and everywhere his oracles were consulted before settling a city and setting laws in a city. And as last contribution to this first part about Apollo, we have to consider that Apollo was the god of the art of muses, because he proceeds over music, songs, dance, and poetry. So the muses were those who proceeded on them and uh, over them there was Apollo, the god of music. And for this, he is considered the inventor of string music, even if we will see soon that uh, Hermes too had a contribution on this. And so for this, he was um, the companion of the muses as a chorus in celebration of all these arts, music, song, dance, and poetry. For this, the lyre is a common attribute to him, to Apollo. Then, the last thing is that Apollo, especially during the Hellenistic times, uh, is called Apollo Helios. Helios means sun. So he became identified with 
the Titan god of sun and uh, amongst uh, the Romans happened this too. So Apollo frequently will be the, then seen as uh, identified as the sun in the earth.